people in the United States complain, oh, the Federal Reserve has printed $4 trillion in the past year. And they have. They have printed $4 trillion in the last year. They're taking the Fed balance sheet from about $3.5 trillion to $7.5 trillion. So, yeah, we printed $4 trillion in the past year. Didn't do any good. Won't do any good, but we did it. Uh, but the Chinese money supply is even larger and growing faster. Now, I don't want to get into the weeds on China's internal monetary policy. I could, except to say that they're grossly over leveraged. Um, they, it's, the economy is investment driven, not consumption driven. They're about 40%, 45% investment. The U.S. is about 25% investment. So that gives you some idea of how much, how investment is to the Chinese, which is actually okay if you're investing in productive assets that pay the way. They're not. They're wasting the money. I've, I've been to China many times, been going back and forth there for uh, 35 years. Um, I've been out in the countryside. I don't just stick to the hotel lobby in Beijing. I got mud on my boots visiting these ghost cities. Um, and the ghost cities are interesting. I, I was there one, uh, I don't know, south of uh, Nanjing, uh, kind of out in the boondocks a little bit. But I was, you know, you always have Communist Party officials with you. They're keeping an eye on you. And um, so each ghost city, there are a bunch of them, actually seven up. Seven, imagine building seven cities. That's what I saw. And so they got one or two skyscrapers and they got mixed use and they got retail shopping, a country club, a hotel, a golf course, a pond, highway stops, airport, etc. cetera. Um, and it's all empty. I mean, it's just all empty. Shiny new construction, some of it's still under construction, um, all empty. So I said to the communists, I said, what are you guys doing here? I mean, no, nobody's here. So, oh, don't worry, don't worry. People will be coming from the countryside. They will be populating these cities. And uh, I said, when? I said, no one's coming. And uh, besides that, you've already drained the countryside. That already happened, you know, 15 years ago. But I said, you cannot mothball a building. The way a building maintains itself, it gets occupied and is maintenance and people fix it and all that. I, I, I visited, I used to travel a lot in Central Africa in the early 80s. Um, Zaire at the time, today it's the Congo, I was in Kinshasa, but it was right after the 70s commodities boom, when cocoa prices and oil prices and copper prices were skyrocketing because of inflation. And they took the money, of course they wasted it, and they built these skyscrapers in Kinshasa, um, which is like a swampy, scary, funky, you know, city. It's, it's, uh, if you've read, uh, Joseph Conrad's heart of darkness, you kind of get the idea, but, um, but there's a skyscraper and, but the windows are falling out and there were rust stains running down this, the side and the elevators were broken. So it might've looked nice the day they built it, but it was never really used. And now it was literally when I was there, it was not much later after they built it, it was falling apart. So that's going to happen in China. My point being, if you uh, apply, you know, generally accepted accounting principles to their investment account, you would write it off the day they open the building because nobody's there. It's not worth anything. So they're wasting the money. They're over leveraged. They're overprinted. However, none of that has anything to do with the status of the Chinese yuan as a global reserve currency. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. The, the yuan is not a reserve currency. It will not be probably in my lifetime. Maybe never, maybe never. Um, and I'll tell you why, because uh, a lot of people don't understand what a reserve currency really is. You know, you get a report from the IMF and it says, you know, 60% of global reserves are in dollars, which is true, and about 25% are in euros, which is true. So 85% of global reserves are in dollars or euro, which means the only meaningful exchange rate in the world is the euro US dollar cross rate. Everything else is working around the edges. You got some sterling and yen and Swiss francs and a couple other things. Aussie dollar is tiny, believe it or not, good currency, but not a, not a big part of it. And China's like this kind of invisible 1% sliced down at the bottom. And, and China has $1.4 trillion in its reserves. But here's the point. It's not as if they have pallets of $100, $100 bills stacked up in the basement of the People's Bank of China. They don't. You invest in securities. In other words, they're dollar denominated securities. So it's not actually dollars. They're treasury bills, notes, and bonds denominated in dollars. So the thing that makes a reserve currency is not the currency, it's the bond market. You need something to invest in uh, with maturities. You need, uh, again, so you need a, a liquid bond market with different maturities, different interest rates. You need dealers, you need auctions, you need payment and clearance systems, you need repo or repurchase agreements, futures, options, 
when issue trading, uh, you know, custodians, the rule of law. There's a whole massive infrastructure which we started working on uh, when Alexander Hamilton was, uh, um, you know, advising George Washington, and we've been doing it ever since. And others, Bank of England has done the same. China doesn't have any of that. None of it. There's no significant Chinese bond market. Um, they don't have the infrastructure of banks and dealers I described. They don't have the physical infrastructure, and most of all, they don't have a rule of law. You can't try, throw a Chinese, you know, trust the Chinese as far as you can as, throw them, um, and so they have no chance of being a global reserve currency. None. Same with the Russian ruble. Same with a lot of other currencies. Same with Bitcoin. There's no show me the Bitcoin bond market. Maybe you can get my attention, but not sooner. Where's the rule of law with Bitcoin? Doesn't exist. So none of those are going to replace the dollar. I, first thing, I, I, my wife hates me to admit this, but I was once a registered lobbyist in Washington. I ran an office there. I spent a lot of time on Capitol Hill. And the first thing I learned in Washington is you can't beat something with nothing. You know, if you hate a policy or a program, you just hate it, you write op-eds, you pro fine. You're not going to change it unless you bring something to replace it. So for all the criticisms of the dollar, and there are plenty of them, you're not going to dethrone the dollar as the leading global reserve currency. And there's one and only one contender in the world today, which is gold. So that's a whole other conversation. I'm not saying we're going to be on a gold standard tomorrow. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with first-hand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just one dollar. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.